let's start off by getting Core Jam into our project. Now in Ableton here, I have a grand piano set up on its own channel. And I'm just hitting individual notes there, but we're going to turn those into chords in a second. Now I've also got another MIDI channel here, blank MIDI channel, and this is what I'm going to drag and drop Core Jam onto. Now we have the interface all here and I'll go through that in a second, but let's just make sure that that is rooted into our piano so that whenever we hit any notes on Core Jam, it'll be rooted through to the piano. So from the piano inputs, I'm going to select the Core Jam channel. This is the one that's just above there. And then from the second drop down, I'm going to select Core Jam. I'm also going to make sure that it's set to in as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to arm the Core Jam channel so I can hit any MIDI notes and it'll come through there. So you can now hear that by hitting those individual notes, we're now actually triggering chords. And that's how simple it is to get Core Jam set up within your project. Now let's open up the main interface and have a look through there. Now Core Jam features three main sections. We have the chord creation section at the top here, the sequencer section, and then also the pads. But we're going to go through each one of these in turn, starting off with the chord creation section. Now at the top left here, this is where we set the key that we're working in and the scale that we're working in. So from the drop down here, you can choose whichever scale you want to. For example, let's work in D. And then from the scale type, we can choose whichever scale we want. For example, we want major maybe. Chord Jam also features a chord detection system as well. If you hit the magnifying glass and then drop your sample onto there, it will go through and it'll analyze that sample for the possible types of chords and scales in that sample. As you can see here, it's given us three different options and we can choose whichever one is most appropriate for that sample. You can choose the different scales from the drop down, or you can use the left and right arrows to be able to choose between the different scales within there. You also have a random button here to select a random scale. Now that we've selected our key and our scale, we can now hit keys on the keyboard and all the different chords that we play will automatically be in that key and scale. Next up, we can actually choose to put it up or down an octave. Next up is the chord type. This allows us to set what kind of chord type that Chord Jam will then generate chords from. So let's, for example, choose minor ninth. Again, we can use the drop down to select that, or we can use the left and right arrows to switch between them. Or we can use the random button to select a random chord type. You'll also notice another button here next to the key, the scale and the chord type. This is the trigger button. And we're going to come on to this in a later video, but believe me, it's a really interesting and very creative feature. Next up, let's have a look at the voices section. Now, Chord Jam can generate up to five different voices from just hitting one key on your keyboard. We're using the minor ninth chord type. So that allows us to have up to five different voices. And within the voices section, we can really control this and do some very interesting stuff with it. For example, down the left hand side here, we have the ability to enable or disable different voices within that chord. We can also shift the individual voices up and down an octave. We also have a random button, which allows us to really mix up the different parameters within the voices section. So 
so you can keep clicking on that random button until you find the right parameters that you like. Now linking quite closely to that random button is the infinity button. This is a really interesting feature because if you enable this, every single time you hit a key on the keyboard, this will all be randomized. So it's a bit like clicking the random button with every single key press. So I'm just pressing a single key on my keyboard there and it's randomly changing those voices settings every time I hit that key. Obviously, if you like anything it does, then you can obviously turn it off and then it will keep those settings. If you want to revert the voices back to their default state, you can click this arrow at the bottom here. Now let's have a look at the velocity section. This allows us to control the velocity of every single one of those voices. You can see these little sliders here correspond to the five voices on the left hand side here. So we can adjust these as we start playing the chords. Now we also have the random button within here as well. So whenever I click this, it will randomize all those velocities. Which can give you some really varied results, but we can actually fine tune this randomization because we have a minimum value and a maximum value. And we can set these to whatever we want to. And then those random results will actually be generated between these two different posts. So for example, let's increase the minimum and decrease the maximum. So it will randomize the velocities within these two dots. This can be really great if you want subtle variations in velocity. Now we also have the infinity button within this section as well. If I activate this, every time I hit a key, the velocities will automatically regenerate. So with every single key press, those velocities will be automatically randomized, which will lead to a more humanized kind of feel. And finally, on the right hand side here, we have the time section. This allows us to delay the individual notes within our chords. So we can actually create a more of a strumming effect, for example, where we delay each individual note within that chord. This is more of a dramatic effect, but obviously you can reduce this and actually create more kind of humanized chords. And we also have our parameters at the top here so we can add a upper and a lower amount that we want the time to be delayed by. And I can use the randomize button again. And of course we have the infinity button in this section as well, which means that every time that we hit a note, those timings will be randomized. Now at the moment, we're actually adjusting all of these delays manually, but we can actually enable sync, which will actually sync in time with our door. You can see when I adjust these, we can see the timings on the right hand side here. Now also within here, we have an ARP section. This allows us to take our chords that we're generating on the left hand side here and turn it into an arpeggiator. We can change the direction at the top here and we can change the rate here. And we can also give it a bit of swing as well. And finally, let's talk about the biggest button in this top section, the main random button. This will actually randomize all the parameters below.
So every time you hit the random button, it will randomize the parameters in the voices section, velocity and the timing. However, you can actually exclude any one of these sections from the main randomization. Next to each one of these sections, we have a lock button, a little key. This allows you to lock that and it won't be affected by the main random at the top here. So this can be useful if you've actually found the right voicing, for example, that you really like, but you want to randomize the velocity and the time both together. So as an example, we can take a fairly static chord like this. We can adjust the voices to make it sound a little bit more interesting. We can vary the velocity every time we hit the key. So I'm going to select the range. I'm going to put it on infinity. And I'm also going to do the same with the time. I'm going to slightly vary the timing of those notes. Again, I'm going to put the infinity key on.